G'day everyone and welcome to the December 2021 edition of Australian Model Railway News. Now before I get into this episode, I just want to let everyone know that down in the description below is everything that I talk about, mention and all the appropriate links. As well as that, in the timeline, there will be, I guess it's time stamped to where, what manufacturer or what segment is available when, if you do need to come back to anything or just want to skip ahead. Also, if you are new here, don't forget to be subscribed so you don't miss out on anything that I have coming out in the future. Now, let's get into it. To kick off the month, we finally got an update from Ascision about the much anticipated and awaited G and BL class locomotives. Ascision have said that the HO scale G and BL class locomotive painted samples have arrived. And Ascision is going over the samples now. And according to them, at this stage, they're expecting the BL class to go into production in the second quarter of 2022. Now here's a quick overview of these models. There'll be 13 options for the BLs and 13 options for the Gs. These will be available in both DCC and sound equipped versions. They'll be made up of an ABS plastic body with black and metal disc wheels, which are RP25-110s. They'll feature scale sized metal knuckle couplers. They'll have a highly detailed underframe, have separately applied metal parts, brass horns, metal and plastic handrails and brake piping, highly detailed bogies with separately applied parts. They'll be factory painted and decorated and will run with a recommended minimum radius of 18 inches. They'll also operate on code 70, 83 and 100 rail. They will also feature detailed cabs with painted driver figures, metal etched mirrors and windscreen wipers, see-through metal etched grills, operating LED headlights, number box lights, marker lights and ditch lights, where applicable, with a manual override switch. Five pole skew wound motors with twin brass flywheels, They'll be all wheel drive and electrical pickup. They'll feature separately applied air hoses and MU cables. They'll be DCC ready with a 21 pin socket on standard DC models. They'll feature a heavily die car chassis and be the most accurate and highly detailed BL class available on the market. The sound models will feature an ESU Loc Sound V5 21 pin decoder, a Cision Vander Sound speaker enclosure with twin speakers, prototypical sound files, EMD 16-645E3B engine, startup, shutdown, idle and running, Leslie Super Typhoon S5T air horns, short and long, brake squealing, coupler, release and crash, and handbrake released and applied. Ascision have said they are to advise their factory of their order quantity for this production run by the end of the month. So they've said if you haven't placed an order yet and you don't want to miss out on the pre order price rising by about $60, now is the time to put your orders in. As for pricing, these locomotives will be priced at $275 for a DC model or $375 for a DCC and sound equipped model, which according to Ascision will stay that way until about early 2022. Next up, they've said to keep an eye out in 2022 for a new release of NR class locomotives in both Pacific National and National Rail liveries. And these will arrive alongside the indigenous liveried locomotives. 14 new numbers will be available. NR13 and NR104 in National Rail. NR40 in National Rail with the GAN logo on the nose. NR4, NR22 and NR100 in Pacific National Four Stars. NR11, NR98, and NR107 in Pacific National 5 stars, NR36 and NR122 in Pacific National 5 stars, which is a unique livery, NR14 and NR34 in Pacific National Real Trains, not Road Trains, and NR66 in Pacific National Real Trains Movember. Both DC and DCC sound equipped models will be available but they've said to check back early in the new year for further details. But we still don't have any updates for the N-Scale modelers on the N-Scale NR release. And in addition to the Sydney Tangaras, the HO Scale Transport Sydney Trains Tangara Suburban Train with upgraded doors will be available in late January 2022. This is the most current livery as seen running today around the Sydney network. Four different four car sets will be available with no options for pre-orders. And lastly, from Ascision, HO Scale CHS slash NHF Coal Hopper and BGVF Grain Hoppers have been announced. 
They're producing the 1976 built Vickers Scott New South Wales CHS coal hoppers alongside the modified grain version for SSR coded BGVF. There will be four different body versions that have been tooled covering more than eight liveries. Models will also include removable coal loads for the CHS and NHVF. They'll also feature metal etched ladders and steps, scale sized knuckle couplers, Super detailed bogies with all bogey frame details, including separately tooled brake rigging, internal hopper details, and fitted grain roof on the BGVF. With tooling samples expected soon, they have also now opened up pre-orders for these models. These are expected in mid-2022, with pricing at $250 for a four-car pack. And that's a saving of $50 after the delivery price. For more information and order forms, they are all available on Decision's website. Now over at IDR Models, they have also announced the tooling for the CHS and NHVF coal hoppers. Yes, that is the same ones I'm talking about from Precision. IDR have said that their models will feature KD-158 scale head couplers, semi-scale 10.5 millimeter blackened metal wheels, removable coal loads, internal body details, full brake rigging and underfloor detail, delivered fully painted and decorated, and five versions will be available from the mid 1970s to the 2000s. The pre-order price is $250, which will rise by $50 to $300 when they become available. And they've said that they'll have tooling samples ready in early 2022. So if you are in the uh, market for these, which way will you go? Will you go with IDR or will you go with Ascision? Considering that they are both priced exactly the same and may have a very, very similar delivery date. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. IDR have also announced the full details and pre-orders for the Derm and MT trailers. They've said that these models are now in the final development stage, the Derm and MT, and they will of course have these following features, just for those who need a reminder. These will be DCC and sound fitted, fitted with ESU V5 decoders. They will feature a built-in stay alive with a programming switch. They'll have directional lighting, controllable headlight and markers in the DCC mode. Interior lighting in the Derm, KD couplers, standard with an MTC 21 pin motherboard fitted to all derms, five pole skew wound electric motor and dual flywheels. They'll be available in DCC with sound fitted or DC, and they'll be available in two packs containing the RM and MT or single packs of the RM or MT. Two pack model numbering cannot be changed. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, the IDR models uh, W class is still one of my favorite locomotives and it's still one of the best performing locomotives I have. So I'm very, very keen to see what they do with the Derm and trailer set. Now in terms of pricing for these packs, pre-order pricing for DC is $430 or DCC for 560, which will rise by $40 on delivery. Derm in a single unit is $310 for a DC unit or 440 for DCC, which will rise by 20 and the MT trailer with a price of 135 will rise to 160 on delivery with 17 different options available. Now they've said that these should be available in the second quarter of 2022 with order forms now online. Now on track models and they're 45 foot uh, New South Wales Louver vans. They've said that the New South Wales 45 foot Louver vans have arrived at their warehouse earlier than expected. And they've said that the last of the pre-orders will be sent out soon. The pre-order price has finished and that has made them rise by about $5 a pack. They've also said that they've sold now over 60% of the incoming stock with packs GLX4, LLV8 and NLB2 running very low and the others are not far behind it. And that's very exciting for everyone who put down a pre-order. I assume that we'll be able to get these in store very soon. Custom Hobby decals and stickers have recently re-released their PTC era decals via their eBay store and they'll be adding both the State Rail Authority era and late 90s variants. 
They'll also be adding both a five carriage set and a V10, nine car plus spare, 10 carriage set. These are designed to match the Spirit Art Deco decals released by Jacob Franklin. Bergs have said that the Commonwealth Engineering 1955 series single deck Sputnik samples have arrived in store. The 1955 Comeng series were colloquially called Sputnik, and these cars were moved away from the riveting to the welding process of joining metals. This set is a single deck set and introduced electrically operated doors with 16 different options for single deck sets. Tuscan red, blue and white, as well as the HET heritage set and the orangutan floral zoo set. Prices for a pack of two trailer cars from 295, then up to 475 for a set of one powered and unpowered set, then 475 for a set of two, one powered and one unpowered, a set of four, including a power car for 745 and 950 for the zoo sets. With more information and order forms over on the Berg's website. Southern Rail models Queensland's tank cars, HO 12mm and 16.5mm gauges. Now I'm honestly not sure when these uh, were announced, but this is what I found. These will be ready to run, six different versions in 12 different pack options. They'll have highly detailed bodies, under frames, there'll be injection molded bodywork, stainless steel etched walkways and platforms, separately applied metal parts, factory painted and nine decorations for multiple eras from 1970 to 2006. They'll have genuine KD58 whisker couplers, blackened spoked and solid metal wheels, RP25-100, unique coupler height adjuster skip for HO and HO and three and a half. These are priced at $72 for a single tanker or 215 for a set of three, although there is no information when these will become available, but pre-orders are available on their website. Now, we did get a bit of an update from the crew over at Phoenix and SDS Models. They've said that the D3 ESU Sound Dakotas are on their way to Australia and are due in Sydney around the 5th of January. The 81 classes, some SRA livery models are on their way and they're due mid-January. The remainder will be shipped as they're completed during the course of early 2022. The end platform cars are ready to ship and awaiting consolidation at the end of the month with some other products and they'll be available in late January 2022. The LHG brake van and BPL BCPL carriages are almost ready to ship and will be available in late January 2022. Some SO, SOC wagons will be shipped in mid-January and the remainder completed in late February, with some available from late February in 2022. Painted and lettered LHO, LHY brake van and KP sorting van samples are in transit and they'll post some images in early January. Painted 900 class diesel samples, unfortunately won't make the holidays cut, but we will see them in early March. All chassis assemblies will be ready though, and they can proceed with assembly very quickly. F, Y, and 1620 class samples will be available in late January. The VR D3 limited stock, and some 1960s tour trains engines with dedicated headboards, Two new versions of D3639 in 1970s red and polished steam dome and D3639 steam rail post 1988 with headboard. These will arrive late February 2022. In addition to the above release, they've also reordered D3639 
with black and red lining and D3639 in Canadian red Osteam 88. These will arrive in mid-2022. They've said that they've underestimated the popularity of these two versions. The VRK class is in final redevelopment work and the supplier is about to commence new tooling and improvements to the old one. They said that they'll have the pre-production engineering samples in mid second quarter 2022 and they intend to be able to deliver these models in late 2022. They've also intended to release some period appropriate rolling stock to suit both their D3 and K class locomotives next year. I wonder what they'll be. And lastly, they also posted a little update with some graphics of the New South Wales Government Railways D50 and D53 class locomotives, but no real information apart from some pictures. So I guess we'll wait and see what's next with that. Can-Do Workshops now have a high-resolution 3D printed model of the Australian National AHSF AHSA hopper wagon, most notably used on the Penrise Stone Train or the Stony, in N scale or 1 1 60th. This is for a body only and is unpainted. Bogies and couplers are not included and some work is required to clean up some minor areas on the model prior to painting. The body has been designed to be used with micro trains, Benderhof style bogies, trucks, with short extension Magnematic couplers. Bolsters will need to be drilled out with a 564th drill. They have been painted in SMS paints, AN green and AN yellow. They also have 3D printed holders for your NCE, power cab or pro cab controllers. Simply mount strongly to your fascia or any strong vertical surface with two screws. It holds the controller nice and snug and is easy to pull out when you need it. 3D printed with PLA plus filament in black by default with other colors available. And you can contact them to see what's available. And these will set you back $10. Now they have also said that in an upcoming release, Chicago Freight Car Leasing Australia 100 ton aluminum grain hoppers. These are resin printed and they will not be a single piece body. They're still working on that part. Most likely the roof will need to be glued on separately. This makes it more economical to print and also allows weight to be added. So keep an eye out for a few more things from Candu. Trackside models have announced their newest product line. They've added to the rack and stack system for the tabletop painter. These are specifically designed for the SMS infinite range. It will also hold the Vallejo paint just as nicely holding up to 14 paints in one hit. This rack will set you back $9.95. Also having a quick look around their website, I did notice a number of racking options for our model railway needs from things like painting drawers and shelving units for holding paper towels, tools, paint, and much more. Not to mention that keeps everything nice and neat. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty grass, so sweet. Models Warehouse released five new kits from Tyson's Trains of some Queensland railway carriages. They're the QR TGV Guards Van Kit, C-Class Covered Wagon Goods Van, MTW Flat Wagon, WW Water Tanker, and the UW Water Tanker. These are 3D printed kits that have been pre-primed and just need bogies, couplers, decals, and painting to complete. These kits come as either pre-primed in gray or red oxide, depending on the model type, They've also been designed to accommodate bogies in HO and three and a half. However, with some slight modifications can also accommodate standard HO bogies. Some sanding may be required. And just a quick note, these kits do not come with the bogies, couplers or decals. Now at the time of filming this, some of these kits have in fact sold out. So it might be worth messaging them to see when these kits will be available again. They also have Evans cars, BU, BUV, which currently have expressions of interest and all you need to do if you're keen is fill out this order form to show your interest in ordering the Evans cars BU, BUV, which ran from 1950 to the 1990s. These kits will be available in HO scale and you can choose your own bogey sizing. However, they've said that there will be issues with tight curves, 16 and a half mil bogies given the limited mobility between the side steps. These will also be the high elliptical roof version. 
Each kit will contain a complete polyurethane body, decals, some, decal, some details and instructions. Couplers, bogies and axles are all sold separately. Single kits will be $69 each, with a pack of four for $260 and an eight pack will run you $475. This is an expression of interest only, you're not committing to purchasing any of these items. However, prices may be subject to change. Bob's Models and Hobbies have announced that we'll see a rerun of the New South Wales Railway's 42 class locomotives. These models will feature a five pole skew wound motor, twin flywheels, all wheel pickup, RP25 slash 100 profile wheels, working directional headlights and marker lights. They'll be DCC and sound ready, requiring a 21 pin decoder. They'll have flushed glazed windows, brass etched grills, KD couplers, and we'll have a cab interior with crew. There'll be eight different options available and they are listed at $270 for a DC model. Order forms are now available on their website. They've also said on a social media post that in January we'll see a pre-order open up for the GM class locomotives as well. And lastly, in Model Railway news, Roundhouse Boxes, who I touched on last month, now got N-Scale Boxes out and ready for shipment. Single tray boxes in either HO or N-Scale now for $65 plus postage. A double tray box in either HO or N-Scale for $95 plus post. Plus the uh, HO scale um, single locomotive box, which I showcased in last month's episode. I've had a few people say that you also grabbed them uh, for holding onto your J-Class and now for me, my C38 which is a review that will come soon. So if you are after one of these boxes, you can contact them via social media. So in my own news, this month I released just in time for summer some Victorian Railways hats, which have been quite popular, and some Victorian Railways glassware. These are now almost sold out. I've still got a few of these, and the Victorian Railways beanie has also sold out. Now, there will be more merch coming uh, in 2022, uh, and I guess they'll come out as collections rather than just like individual bits here and there. So you might see some themed stuff coming out, but anyway, that will all be, I guess, announced when it gets announced. So if you wanna keep up to date with that, you can check out my social media and website. And of course, if there is anything that you think you'd like to see me produce, leave it in the comments. You never know, it might just happen. So on to exhibition news and updates. The Warrnambool Model Railway Club will have their exhibition at St. Joseph's Primary School on the 8th and 9th of January. On the 15th and 16th of January, Phillip Island and District Model Railway Show will be held at the Senior Citizens Hall in Cowes, Victoria. The Grampians Model Railroaders will have Victoria's smallest exhibition on the 19th and 20th of February in the Stall Railway Goods Shed. The Stall Vintage Tractor and Engine Club will have a display of tractors and trucks over the weekend as well. In Bundaberg over the 19th and 20th of March, the Bundaberg Model Train and Hobby Expo will be held at the Bundaberg Multiplex and Convention Centre. The Model Railway Craft and Hobbies Exhibition will be held at Sacred Heart College in Kyneton over the March Labor Day weekend with 24 layouts and stalls in attendance. The Sandown Mini Train Show will be on from the 12th to the 14th of March at the Sandown Racecourse in Melbourne. The AEP has announced a Model Train Exhibition as Sandown for March 2022 will be reduced in its format as it was between 2007 and 2010, this time being downstairs and just a model train show. This is due to the last minute nature of the event and the need for a reduced format due to timing, access and availability of the venue and displays. They said that in 2023, they will hopefully be back bigger and better and the full sized format. The 33rd annual Canberra Model Railway Expo 
is on over the weekend of the 26th and 27th of March at UC High School Kayleen. Amra Brisbane will be holding the first of their open days for 2022 on the 2nd of April at their club rooms in Zilmere, Queensland. The Arrow Valley Model Railway Club will have their exhibition held over the Easter long weekend at Diamond Creek. The 2022 Brisbane Model Train Show will be held on the 30th of April and the 1st of May at the Brisbane Showgrounds. The Great Train Show at the Rose Hill Racecourse put on by the Epping Model Railway Club will be held over the 14th and 15th of May. The Murray Railway Modellers will hold their exhibition on the 21st and 22nd of May 2022 in Albury. The biannual Morwell Exhibition will be held at the Kernoint Hall in Morwell, Victoria over the June long weekend put on by the LVMRA. The Adelaide Model Railway Exhibition will be held over the June long weekend at the Greyhound Park, Angle Park. The South Pine Model Train and Hobby Expo will be held at the South Pine Sports Complex in Brendale on Saturday and Sunday the 9th and 10th of July. So that was all for exhibition news and updates. If you are in a model railway club and you do have an open day, an exhibition or a buy swap sell day coming up, just send me an email and I will happily add it into the list. So we can make your event nice and popular and get it out to more people. So on to this month's question. What's something you want to see Australian model railway manufacturers do in 2022? For me, it's, and I've said it before, it's pre-orders. I should be able to go to a website, click pre-order, get an instant receipt and confirmation of my order. And it's all there rather than having to print off or email away a order form. I think it's antiquated and things get lost and Australia Post isn't always that reliable and there's lots of other things. I think that's something I really wanna see. Now OnTrack did it with their 45 foot Louvre vans. You could pre-order by simply a click of a button, put in your payment details and there it was, a receipt. And then you get tracking updates and everything like that. So for me, pre-orders, online. Of course, you can keep the old system as well. That's fine. I know that works for some people, but for me, I don't put down pre-orders because I, there's no proof of anything. And then you wait a while and then either there's not enough money or, you know, it's a whole thing. Anyway, that's what I'd like to see in 2022. Automated pre-orders. What would you like to see in 2022 from Australian model railway manufacturers? Leave it in the comments below. So that's it for Australian model railway news for December, 2021. I'd like to take this moment to say a huge thanks to all my Patreons and thanks to everyone who watches this channel and who has subscribed throughout 2021 in the last six or so months since I started making these videos. If you haven't already, don't forget to be subscribed. It helps out a lot and it gives me more motivation to keep churning this channel along and making more and more videos. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Anyway, I'll be back in 2022 with lots more videos, news, trip, reports and all the other good stuff. So have a happy new year. We'll see you soon. Hooroo.